So generally speaking, the FAA doesn't care if you are flying an aircraft below 400 feet, unless you're in a restricted area sure. and certain classes of airspace, they will control it all the way down to the ground. Uh, however, in most areas, you go out to your local park, you go out to your backyard or your local flying field. If you stay below 400 feet, the FAA uh -huh. is totally okay with that right. because you're really not posing much of a danger to any type of manned aircraft. The only thing flying that low is going to be helicopters at that 400 feet and above uh, altitude, and you're usually going to hear them coming. Okay. So people want to know about the uh, 333 exemption mm -hmm. and how to get one, who it applies to. So let's start there. Um, mm -hmm. Who can get a 333 exemption? So, and let me start with what is the 333 and who would want to apply for it? Because it's a lot of paperwork and it's not necessary for, for I think, a majority of people that are just getting into the hobby. Uh, as long as you are flying under the FAA's predetermined hobbyist or model aircraft standards, you do not need a 333 you are operating as a model aircraft. And a model aircraft doesn't necessarily mean something, like when I hear the term model, I think of, I bought the box when I was a kid and I mm -hmm. put it together with the tester mm -hmm. glue and I painted it. A model aircraft is just any aircraft that you're flying with a certain purpose, and uh, they've also defined it as being under 55 pounds, is considered to be an SUAS, a small unmanned aerial system. Okay. I've given up trying to correct people that they're not drones, and I've now just, call them drones because everybody knows what that means. Right. It's what the FAA is doing mm -hmm. as well. They've got mm -hmm. the no drone zones. So if the moment that you exceed those model flying standards, you now have to operate under all of the same laws as a manned aircraft would. So if you fly above 400 feet, if you're going to fly at 401 feet, you now have to abide by every law and every regulation that a manned aircraft would have to abide by. If you want to fly at night, the same thing. If you want to fly uh, in, in certain, for commercial purposes. So for monetary gain, you want to sell mm -hmm. a photograph. Right. You want to sell a video. You want to, uh, and people will try and get around that by saying, well, they're paying me for my time, not for my video. Well, the FAA is a federal agency. And uh, my recommendation on that is to stick as close to what their guidelines are as possible. So. As soon as you want to fly outside those standards, you'll realize that you cannot, with a, a drone aircraft, such as the Phantom 3 or similar, you cannot abide by all of the regulations because the FAA has a litany of regulations that are going to require such things as uh, certain placards, certain sizes of tail numbers, certain manuals that are kept on board the aircraft, certain safety features that are, that are uh, inherent to the aircraft. You cannot keep a manual on board of a Phantom 3 or similar drone. So the 333 exemption is really you as a, an individual or as a commercial photographer, if you want to fly outside the hobby standards, you apply for exemptions to each and every one of those regulations, which you cannot uh, physically abide by with a small unmanned aircraft. And uh, one of those regulations or one of the questions that comes up oftentimes is do you need a pilot's license to apply for a 333 right. uh, in a real manned pilot's license and the answer to that is no you don't you can apply for a 333 and not have a pilot's license it may or may not be granted these are just simply petitions to the faa mm -hmm. however you cannot operate the aircraft without having a manned pilot's license that is not one of the exemptions that the faa is currently accepting They'll accept things such as the size of lettering on the side of your aircraft and certain markings and certain manuals kept on board. They'll allow an exemption on those things, but they won't allow the exemption on the pilot's license. And so that's really the big barrier to a lot of people who want to get into uh, making a little bit of money with their drone or flying a little bit higher with their drone. Mm -hmm. And especially when they're flying above their farmland or they're flying above uh, uh, private land, they, they mm -hmm. don't see the point and why can't I fly at a thousand feet? I'm in the middle mm -hmm. of nowhere. Right. And in most cases, that's going to be totally safe and uh, even reasonable. But right. for right now, the FAA is still saying, no, you cannot do that and you must have a pilot's license.
So I said a minute ago that you don't have to have the pilot's license to apply for the 333, but you do have to to operate. So what does that look like? It would mean you, Jim, as a like an inspire. photographer, mm -hmm. for example, could apply for a 333 exemption, have it granted, and then hire me, a licensed pilot, to operate on your behalf for your company. So as long as I'm the one who's in control of that aircraft, you would be within your... Uh, within your legal exemptions. And that would be really handy if you start looking at some of the larger aircraft or even the Inspire 1 from DJI where there's two controllers. I could be flying the aircraft and Jim, the photographer, could be running the second controller and uh, directing me in where you want those shots and how you would like them to be composed and you're uh -huh. operating the camera. So there are some really good ways for you to go about it. It's just more difficult to do if you don't have a pilot's license and if you don't know somebody who can fly for you on your behalf under your exemption. Are there any other exemptions that one can apply for outside of the 333? At this time there are no other options for flying legally outside of the hobby model standards that the FAA has set. The 333 is really your only way to go about it unless you're a public entity. So if you're a public entity such as a law enforcement agency or a sheriff's department, uh, something of that nature, a school district, a university for example, anything that's a public entity is going to be able to apply for a COA or a certificate of authorization. I see. So that certificate of authorization is going to be in place of the 333. Although it's similar, uh, it's going to allow them certain exemptions to the law so that they can fly for different purposes, for law enforcement, for search and rescue, for research. Uh, there are not a lot of those that have been granted. There's a list of them available online on the FAA's websites. And the same thing is true for the 333 exemptions. So if you're interested in seeing what type of businesses and individuals are getting approved for those, uh, go on the FAA's website and you'll be able to see every single one that's pending and every one that's been granted. I see. And you'll have an opportunity to make public comment on those during the open period prior to them being granted. And a lot of people do that.